Did you know that you could find a cactus in Canada? To most, Canada is but a cold and desolate place known for its vast arctic tundra and millions of kilometers of wilderness. One thing is for sure, Canada is definitely not known for its beautiful climate and year-round beautiful temperatures. However, Canada does have a lot of biomes within its massive territory and one of those biomes is surprisingly a semi-desert. In fact, if we take a look at this map created by a Russian German guy named Kopin, we can notice that in light yellow depicts what he calls a BSK or cold semi-arid zone right about here. Now this zone is quite large, encompassing vast areas of southeastern Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan. The biome then stretches along the Canadian US border where it then expands through the American prairies. This semi-desert is actually home to some medium-sized cities, such as Medicine Hat and Lethbridge on the Albertan side, and we also have Swift Current on the Saskatchewan side. And now if we take a look at a satellite map of the area, it is very easy and evident to notice where the biome begins and ends. What is evident is the apparent dryness of the land, appearing to be much less productive and significantly less lush than the DFB or warm summer humid continental biome in blue surrounding the semi-desert. We can also notice a subtle exception in the area right on the border between Alberta and Saskatchewan where we can find a DFC or subarctic biome in dark green. This area is known as the Cypress Hills. Essentially, it's a massive hill system spanning for hundreds of kilometers and is actually the highest peak in Saskatchewan with 1,392 meters in elevation. Oh, Saskatchewan, you are so flat and rectangular, man. Literally the South Dakota of Canada. Now back to the Cypress Hills, its hilly terrain mixed with higher elevations simply creates a different climate zone, hence why it is not considered part of the semi-desert. Also, if we zoom in on the satellite map of this biome, we can notice an interconnected system of valleys transecting the landscape. These are known as coolies and they form the massive valleys of most rivers in the area. These coolies are essentially the remnants of the last ice age. You see, most of North America was actually covered by a massive ice sheet and when this ice sheet melted away, the melted water actually created these massive rivers. And these new rivers carved out the coolies and at the time, these coolies would have actually been completely full. With the ice age long gone, only a fragment of the rivers are left which exposes these massive valleys. Some have even left some interesting sculptures, such as the hoodoos along the Milk River. And these are basically just rocks protruding out of the valley, as you can see with this picture. Also, the University of Lethbridge even built one of its faculties in the coolies, which if you ask me, looks pretty neat. Now that we've got the geographical aspect out of the way, let's continue by exploring the temperatures and precipitation of this semi-desert and let's also compare to selected cities across Canada. Let's begin with temperature, comparing the semi-desert with the average temperatures of selected cities across Canada, such as Vancouver, Toronto, and Halifax. As we can see with this graph, the semi-desert is surprisingly very similar to other Canadian cities in terms of temperature. We can notice that the semi-desert does have the warmest summers, but only marginally, which is very surprising as most would think that it would be actually much warmer. However, we can also see that the biome has some of the coldest winters compared to the other cities, especially in contrast with Vancouver. I mean, on average, Vancouver doesn't even have winters in the negatives. So we can conclude that in terms of temperature, the semi-desert is quite average for Canada and does not display any major differences. Now, this is not the case for precipitations and far from it. By comparing the semi-desert with the same three cities, we can immediately see a major difference. The semi-desert receives significantly less precipitation than the selected cities, especially during the winter months. During November, for example, Vancouver receives 39 times more rain than the semi-desert. In fact, there are so few precipitations during the winter months in the semi-desert biome that you often won't even find snow on the ground. 
and the snow that does make it is often melted away within a few days by the warm winds arising from the Rocky Mountains known as Chinooks. Now to return to the chart, during the summer months, the biome receives equal or less precipitations than the other three cities, meaning that the biome has a very short and very weak wet season if you can even call it that. We can then conclude that the major difference between this semi-arid biome and the other biomes across Canada is the amount of precipitations that they receive. And this lack of precipitation really inspired nature to adapt with less water and thus creating this unique landscape that we know today. Now let's find out what exactly adapted to this land. As I mentioned before, this is really the only climate where you're going to find cactuses in Canada, especially around the river valleys and coulees. You'll also notice immediately the abundance of prairie grass growing literally everywhere. Now there is hundreds of different varieties of this prairie grass, but they essentially kind of all look the same, yellow with some grains on top. Trees are essentially non-existent. The only trees you'll find are planted by humans or grow along the river valleys. There is pretty much no natural forests. The land is also characterized by its flatness being completely level with the exception of the river valleys and I guess the Cypress Hills. This combination of flat land and the lack of forest have made this area surprisingly productive in terms of agriculture. Although it is important to point out that the agriculture cannot sustain itself naturally as it does not receive enough precipitations. Irrigation then plays a fundamental role and in order to allow farming on the land, an extensive irrigation canal system was built across southern Alberta and Saskatchewan. These canals nourish themselves with reservoirs that collect the melting snow from the Rocky Mountains. These canals are actually very numerous and fundamental to the local economy as most of these medium-sized cities have actually grown as agricultural hubs for their area. To conclude, this semi-desert is not well known within Canada and remains very much quite obscure. I mean, most people and even Canadians don't realize the diversity of landscape within this country and this semi-desert just goes to show how unique it can really be. Anyways, if you ever pass by Canada's semi-desert, you better stop and take a look because you will be amazed by the uniqueness of this landscape. That will be it for today's video. I hope that you learned something new about Canada's hidden semi-desert. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao, guys.